Hello, this is Ryan Atkinson from Symmetry, and welcome to this overview of the new features within Autodesk's Civil 3D 2022. In this video, we'll look at some of the new features, including some new functionality within the connected alignment command, as well as some more curve groups that are available when creating alignments, which we'll cover later on in the video. We're going to start by looking at the additional features within the connected alignment command. For those of you that haven't used the command, it allows us to create a fillet between two existing alignments that is dynamically linked both horizontally and vertically to the proposed design. So in this case, we have two roads that meet at the junction. And if we want to create a fillet between the two offset alignments, we can use the connected alignment command. The new features that have been added for 2022 are stored within the parameter tab. In previous versions of Civil 3D, we've only been able to add a basic curve with a set radius. But in Civil 3D 2022, we have a lot more options when it comes to the design of the fillet. To start off with, we have a curve group type where we can choose from a list of different curves that we want to add. So for example, I'll choose the spiral curve spiral type and then I can set a curve radius at 15 meters and spiral lengths at 10 meters. We also have the option to choose a spiral type. We can then choose if we want to offset the alignment, which you could use if you were using the center line of the road rather than the offset alignment. And finally, we can set the connection overlap, which will add a straight section either side of the fillet. Once we've set the parameters, I can preview the fillet by clicking the preview button. If I wanted to make changes, I could then go back make the changes and then press the preview button again to view the changes. If I make changes and there's no solution, for example, if I change the radius to 100 and press preview, we'll be shown an error message that gives us a few options. We can return to the previous dialog and manually make changes. We can exit the command and not create the connected alignment, or we can let Civil 3D create an auto fit alignment where Civil 3D will automatically choose the parameters so that the curve has a solution. We're now going to have a look at another curve type, which is a free centered arc. When we go to change one of the arc parameters, we can see that the arc we're changing is highlighted in orange. When we set the length of an arc, the angle will be automatically calculated, or we can set the angle of the arc and the length will then automatically be calculated. We can then click OK. The next new feature is within the connected profile, which dictates how the two alignments are joined in the vertical axis. Civil 3D now has the ability to again choose a profile curve type. We can choose between a parabola and a circular curve, and we can then set either a curve length or a K value. Once we're happy with the parameters, I'll go ahead and click OK to create the connected alignment. If for some reason I wanted to go back and change the curve settings, this is easily done by navigating to the alignment properties and then going to the Connection Parameters tab. I can then make changes to the curve and then click Apply. There is also a new way of editing connected profiles. We can now use grips to edit. The first grip is going to change the overlap length 
and we can slide this up and down the alignment. The next grip is going to dictate the offset. The next few grips will change depending on which curve type you're using. So for this curve, we can edit the different arc lengths and radiuses. OK, the next new feature we're going to look at is the new curve groups when creating alignments. There are three new curve groups that are really useful when connecting to or from a curve. We have a spiral curve spiral spiral or SCSS curve group that will go from a tangent to a curve. We have a spiral spiral curve spiral or SSCS that will go from a curve to a tangent. And we have a spiral spiral curve spiral spiral or SSCSS that will connect two curves. So for this example, we have this curve that is fixed and we need to connect either side of the curve. So to start with, I'm going to use an SCSS to connect the incoming tangent with the curve. So I pick the tangent, then I pick the curve. I then select that I want the solution to be less than 180 degrees. I can then choose the radius and set the lengths of each of the spirals. And when we zoom in, we can see that Civil 3D has added in the curves and the spirals to connect the alignment. We're now going to use an SSCS to go from a curve to a tangent. So again, I pick the first entity, which in this case is the curve. I then pick the second entity, which is going to be the tangent. I again pick the solution should be less than 180 degrees. I can then enter in my radius and spiral lengths. These radius and spiral lengths can all be edited using the grips on the alignment, but I think it's a lot easier to use the grid view. We can then select each element and play around with the spiral lengths or curve radius until we're happy with the design. One thing to be aware of when using these new curve groups is that users of previous versions of Civil 3D may struggle to edit the curves and spirals. And also within this drawing, the entities will be grouped and locked. So if we just wanted to delete part of the group, we will see that Civil 3D will actually delete the entire group. To enable us to break up the groups, we can right click on the alignment and click Convert to Fixed Geometry. This will break up the groups into segments which we can then edit and users on previous versions of Civil 3D will also be able to easily edit these. Now we can delete just one section of the curve group. The final curve group we're going to look at is the SSCSS group that will span between two curves. So I simply select the two curves 
then select that the solution should be less than 180 degrees and I can then enter the radius for the curve and then the length of each of the spirals. The next few features we're going to cover are based around the creation of pressure pipe networks. The first changes come when we're creating a pressure pipe network by path. We're now able to toggle on and off the compass and the snap which gives us a lot more control when placing our bends. The next new feature we're going to take a look at is the profile tab that's been added to pressure networks that have been created by PATH. In previous versions of Civil 3D there was no profile options on the ribbon. However this year you're able to open up the pipe run profile settings. These let you edit the profile settings for the pipe network. The next feature we're going to look at is spanning labels. We can now add spanning labels to pressure pipe networks in both plan and profile views. These can be added from the add label drop down. We then just have to pick the first and last pipe in the run and then Civil 3D will add the spanning labels. As well as the features already covered on this video, there have also been some updates to the ArcGIS connector, including the ability to configure the resolution for each raster layer to be imported into Civil 3D from ArcGIS or refreshed from ArcGIS, and an extension of the list of resolution levels for importing ArcGIS raster data from 19 levels to 23 levels. And that concludes this video on the updates to Civil 3D for 2022.